I want to introduce you to a very important book written by Bart Ehrman back in the early 90s when Ehrman was still a fundamentalist in the Christian camp. The Orthodox Corruption of Scripture, the Effect of Early Christological Controversies on the Text on, of the New Testament. In another book he wrote, The Reliability of the New Testament, Ehrman says, although the quantity of textual variants among the New Testament manuscripts numbers in the hundreds of thousands, those that change the mean impelling comparison, less than 1% of the differences are both meaningful and viable. So as you can see, the corruptions only extend to a very small number that are meaningful. The majority, as Ehrman puts it, have to do with grammatical errors. You know, we, we might say today they forgot to dot the I, cross the T, things like that. But I want to show you here one of those less than 1%, and it has to do with the virgin birth. So in Matthew 1.18, this is today's new international version, one of the few that has the origin of Genesis the Messiah was like this. So there you see the word Genesis, popular because of the book of Genesis. But Ehrman in this book says that scribes changed Genesis to a double N Genesis. So what does that mean? He says, quote, both the words can mean birth, so that either one could be appropriate in the context. But unlike the corrupted reading, the one end, Genesis, can also mean creation, beginning, and origination. The original text could well be taken to imply that this is the moment in which Jesus Christ comes into existence. In point of fact, there's nothing in Matthew's narrative, either here or elsewhere throughout the gospel, to suggest that he knew or subscribed to the notion that Christ had existed prior to his birth. Another corruption he found was in Luke's account. So Luke 1, verse 35, the child that will be born will be called holy, the son of God. He says that a number of witnesses amend this declaration to include a significant prepositional phrase, the child that will be born from you will be called holy. So this variation, he says, is due to early so-called church fathers like Irenaeus and Tertullian, who might have taken offense at the Gnostic claims that Christ did not come from Mary, but came through her like water through a pipe. And that's a quote from Irenaeus. And in turn, he's quoting the Gnostic group called the Valentinians, who believed that uh, Jesus, the Son, pre existed and literally came down out of heaven and passed through Mary like water, which sounds very much to me like the current Orthodox position. So the bottom line is a pre human Jesus is not human. And the, some of the early scribes very well knew that. So why is this important? The famous Vermes in his book, Jesus the Jew, says, it's a fact that Jesus is often called Son of God in the New Testament. It's equally a fact that even non-Christian readers of the Gospels, influenced willy-nilly by church dogma, are liable to identify as a matter of course the title Son of God with the notion of divinity. In other words, the tendency, conscious or otherwise, is to inject into the first Christian writings and beyond them into a tradition sprung from Jewish soil, the most un-Jewish doctrine of the Council of Nicaea. Quote, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, God of God, being of one substance with the Father. 